into the cab, it's the same as the next gen 320 and 23. Nothing has changed there. Standard 10 inch monitor in the 336. Um, ventilated seat, so it's a heated seat. Great storage, uh, the place for lunchbox. Um, the Bluetooth capability, the touchscreen monitor, 10 inch monitor. This one has a 10 inch monitor plus the 3D TD 520. Uh, the creature comforts of the, of the cab are just, they're, they're great. Being able to have Bluetooth capability for your phone to answer your phone remotely, um, to be able to play music through there, whatever you want to do, you have that full capability. Um, step out of the machine, front linkage packages are going to be the same as that we had in the ENF series. So same stick configurations, boom, bucket, all that's, none of that's changing. Uh, some of the great things that we've done as far as performance, we've increased swing torque by 5%. Now that's a couple where places where that, that helps. 5% doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a difference between F-Series. So well, if you're swinging uphill, loaded uphill, that extra 5% is huge. It helps a bunch. If you're backfilling material and you're sweeping in material a little bit, that helps. One big place that we notice in production is truck loading. So as I'm coming up out and I'm swinging to the truck, I am swinging to the truck faster than I was in an F-Series. So our cycle times have increased and you see it a big time right there. Um, the, the fuel, we're dropped fuel 15%. And that's pretty much standard work mode, working in power mode, we're getting up to 15% fuel savings. Um, one of the things that's, that's a good fact is that these machines are EH, so that's a lot of good things. So, I kind of talked about it in the classroom, all the capabilities that we're gonna have right now today and in the future by having an EH machine, but some of the things you've eliminated in the cab is the heat on the operator's legs. Those pilot lines are no longer there. So the cab stays warmer, or well, it helps with the warmth in the winter, but in, in the summer when it's hot, it keeps the cab a little cooler and you don't have that hot stuff on your legs. We've also eliminated almost 200 foot of hydraulic hoses. And what comes with hydraulic hoses is fittings, which fittings tend to leak and large amount of hydraulic oil. So 20% less hydraulic oil machine. Uh, we've reduced uh, filters. So case drain filters are gone, pilot filters are gone. Now, yeah, you say, oh, those are gone. Now what are you doing with that material that that was capturing? We have a magnetic filter inside the hydraulic tank that is serviceable. So when you replace, when you're changing hydraulic oil, you pull that magnet out, clean it out, put it back in, fill your hydraulic oil. So we're not, not capturing that material, we're still getting it and it's still able to be cleansed. Um, let's see, we have capability for reversing fans, which that's fantastic. That was not something that we offered previously. If you're in a high degree area, the waste industry where that is a must, you don't have to go to an aftermarket solution. You can get it in, have it installed, um, go into the display, set it that I want it to go off every 30 minutes, every hour, whatever that may be. That capability is huge. Customers are super excited about that. Uh, Built-in technologies. So one thing I'm super excited about is payload. I loaded a lot of trucks, even though I did sewer and water, you're in the street, you're loading trucks, you just can't spoil the material on the road. So knowing how much material I'm putting in the truck and have it virtually hands-free is fantastic. I can set it up that I don't have to touch the display at all to make payload work. Same thing with the assist feature and having the offsets of it. Being able to change my elevation with the touch of the display or the touch of your finger uh, by changing the offset and having up to four of them is a great feature for the operators. It's less time that they have to stop, take their hands off the joystick, go through the monitor and change things. It's, it's keeping the production going. Um, the the e-sealing features, safety features, of being able to work in a building or work under a bridge deck and not get the, the boom up into the rafters, into the power lines, into the trees. We have all these features. We can stop the machine from swinging into live traffic. If I'm working against Jersey barriers and I have traffic coming, I can swing over here, set my e-stop for swing left, and no matter what I do, I can start over there and swing with a full bucket as fast as the machine will go, will not let me go past that point. It slows the machine down physically, and you come to a stop, and it's nice and smooth. Um, and the autos for digging. If you're digging 12 feet deep and you have a trench box, and you have light, and you have water, you can't see the bottom of your ditch very well sometimes. This depends on time of day, sometimes you can hardly see the bottom. If I tell the machine that I need to dig this deep and I turn the autos on, uh, could be muddy. So if it's muddy and soft, you lose feeling. Whether it's pilot or EH, you can't feel that. Turn your autos on, machine will dig on grade for you. You get the bucket there, you physically have to dig down to that point. But once those bucket teeth achieve grade, all I have to do is stick in and it'll maintain that grade and slope for me. 2D or 3D. 
And, and that goes with all these machines. Brian's gonna talk about the 330 here in a minute, but this would be a 3D integrated machine. Both of these machines represent what a 3D factory machine would look like. Smaller Zephyr 3 antennas, the receivers and the radio are shoved up under the, the expensive stuff, is up under here out of the way. So if somebody's worried about theft, they're gonna have to get tools out. They're gonna have to know where it's at. It's not a simple thing to get to anymore where it was mounted on the back of the cab where you, you could just, oh, that's a radio that's expensive. I want that. So we fixed a lot of that, gotten it out of the way. That's a quick 10 cent story on the, on the 336. The GC now, um, so we'll get it out of there. GC does not stand for anything. It's not general construction. It's not great control. It's not general contractors. It is a trim level. And to use the automotive industry, you have the, the Ford Platinum and you have the Ford XL truck. You get the same quality, the same durability, the same service on that machine. It's just going to perform different. So um, Brian does a great, if I'm not looking for full production digging, mainline digging, full capability of this machine working hard loading trucks, that machine is a great machine for it. So there's no payload technology, no safety built-in features uh, as far as stopping the machines, the limits, and um, the grade control features are not there. But the same durable, durability and quality is there. If you're looking for about 80%, 85% of what this machine will do, that's a great machine. Because I may need the depth and I may need the reach and I may need the lifting capability, but it's not going to be digging on mainline or the high production mode all the time. It may be a dedicated hammer machine and every now and then I need to throw a bucket on there to clean out for uh, bell holes or it's a tie-in machine or whatever the machine may be. There's a lot of different capabilities. It's not a customer specific machine, it's an application specific. And I keep saying, Kiwit and, and Kidco, some of these larger, larger companies may find great use out of having a GC because I need the reach, I need the depth, I need the weight, but I don't need all that performance in, time, in, in machine. So that's, that's a great machine for that uh, application.